So now if we jump back to InDesign, we have that new document dialog box open. We can now go through it and it should make a little bit more sense, right? So at the top when there is a preset, we're not going to mess with that in our class, but if you had saved a preset, um, you could load it. Our intent will always be print, but watch what happens if I choose web. Now my measurements are set to pixels and there's a specific size. If I choose mobile, it changes again. For our class, we'll do print, but you should know that if you wanted to create digital things in InDesign, that's perfectly uh, possible. It's completely possible. Uh, most of our projects will be one page, so I'm going to leave that there, and we're never going to mess with this start number, so we'll leave that at one. I'm only making a one-page document, and I'm not making a book, so I'm going to deselect facing pages because that would be good practice, even though it really doesn't matter if we're creating facing pages or non-facing pages if we only have one page because facing pages determines how multiple pages interact with one another. The page size is U.S. letter by default, but you can change that if you want to. Um, you can also just enter a custom size. And so I believe, if I'm remembering off the top of my head for your next project, you will create a document that is 7 inches by 9 inches, and so you can create a custom size. And then if you wanted it to be portrait orientation, you would choose portrait, and if you wanted it to be landscape, you would choose landscape. In the newest version of InDesign, you can actually hit preview, and it will give you a preview of what your document looks like, so you can kind of check it along the way. Number of columns divides your workspace using guides, and so I said in the previous video, it doesn't make you use guides, it doesn't it make you adhere to the guides, nobody can see the guides, but you could increase the number of columns in your design that would help you um, put text within columns if you're doing a three column layout newsletter, which you will do towards the end of the semester. For now, I'm going to leave that at one, and gutter is a space between columns. Margins, I'm going to set them at 0.125, so they're much thinner than they are now. Um, but they are the gap or the space between where your text ends and where your page ends. And so you should start getting used to the colors of an InDesign document. The black line, the line that you see that's closest to the gray, so the white is my actual page. So the black line represents your page size. And right now, if I was to trim on that black line all the way along the outside, I would end up with a project that is 7 inches by 9 inches. And then the purpley pink line represent your margins. And so whenever you see that, it'll be on the inside of your document and it's purpley pink. If you make columns, they will be purple as well. But the margins, the purpose of them is to say that you don't want anything that you don't want to risk losing going outside those and you're definitely not going to put any text outside them. You can have a background color or a picture that goes past the margins, but you don't want to have any text. So if you decide that your margins are 1.25 inches, and the requirements of the project say that you can have any margins you want, that's perfectly acceptable. You'll just be designing within, you'll be designing your text within that pinky purple line, and you won't have any text between where the margin ends and the page ends. And so for this example, I'm going to put it at 1.125 inches because I believe that is the thinnest that you should ever go with your margins. Moving down, if your document is not, or your dialog box is not expanded, you can expand the bleed and slug area, and you can add bleed and slug. And so, if I add a bleed, standard printing bleeds are 0.125 inches on all sides. Um, you'll see that it's a red area that is outside the page area. It's one eighth of an inch outside because that's what I set it at, and those are standard printing bleeds. And it's additional printed area. And so if I have any artwork that touches the black line, the edge of my page, I'm going to extend it past the edge of the page all the way to the red bleed line so that I have more printed area when I go to trim. If I go to trim and I trim right on this black line, there's no harm, no foul. But if I was just a hair to the left, like right here, if I was right there when I trimmed, I would end up with a bright white streak of paper that shows through if I had stopped my artwork at the page edge. And so that's why we're going to add the bleed. Slug is additional area beyond the page that you would also like to print on, or you would like it to print when you print your document. So in theory, I could use all this gray area to write notes and things, but if I output this file, those notes would never carry through. If you increase your slug, let's just increase the slug on the bottom for now. Let's add a half inch on the bottom. Oh no, I can't scroll. I'll show you when I hit OK. What it's done is it add another series of lines, they're blue lines, that indicate if you were to export or print this file, that area would be included. So if you add text in there, or instructions, or notes, or something in there, um, it will carry through with the file. 
So I'm going to hit OK and leave that there, even though that's not a requirement for any of the projects in R1200. When you select OK, let me just show you real quick, down here, zoom in, that blue area represents your slug, and so you could put some notes inside there if you wanted to add additional information that you wanted to make sure that when I print this, it's printing extra bleed around the outside of the page, plus it'll print the notes, then you can add that slug. Once you create your document, I would recommend saving it right away. Um, you'll get a little tab in the top left-hand corner of the InDesign window for any document that you have open. And right now it says Untitled 1, and I'm viewing it at 109%, which doesn't mean too much for right now. It just means it's bigger than it would actually display um, on when it's printed. Now, if I was to add something, if I was to add a circle to my project, um, or do any editing in any way, you'll see that there's a little asterisk that appears in the top left hand corner of the file name. Um, if you ever see that asterisk, you need to make sure you save because it means whatever you're working on hasn't been saved. And I highly recommend saving like every 20 seconds throughout your, your work. Used to, there used to be the saying that you save every five minutes, but it's so easy to hit control or command S on your keyboard and just save, save, save every 10 seconds that I would recommend saving like literally every 10 seconds. You'll start doing it out of second nature. When you go to save your document, it's important to know the difference between saving and save as, but we're not covering that just yet in my slideshow here. So what we'll do is we'll choose file save. We'll save a copy, which um, because we haven't saved it once, it will be a copy, but it will be the original. And then give it a name, so art1200example. And then just make sure you're saving it as an InDesign document, which should be the default. And as we learned in a previous lecture, it's always important to expand these dialogue. And when you're saving, you want to give it a name, a location, and a file format. And so my name is art1200 underscore example. I'm saving it on the desktop, which I'm actually not right now. I'm saving it in, in this other folder. So I need to change it to the desktop, make sure I'm saving it on the desktop, and then make sure that I'm saving it as the file format that I want. And so when I hit save, it should appear on my desktop. And the last thing I want to talk about in this video before I move on to the next video is whenever you're editing an InDesign document, you will get a .indd file. That's the native file um, format for InDesign. And that's if you just save a document, that's what you'll get. But if you have it open and you're working, you'll get a .idlk file. It's kind of like a temporary working file that opens whenever you have InDesign open. But if you close the file, if I close this, it will automatically disappear and it will go away. So when you're packaging your project and you have it open and then you're going to compress it and you're going to send it to me, make sure you don't see that .idlk, .idlk file because it means that it's still open somewhere and there's a possibility that you haven't saved the changes but yet you're compressing it and making a zip and then when I open it on my end it won't have all the changes that you think it has.